Hi, my name is Shojil Khan from the Georgia Tech. I'm here to present our paper, Vico, using demand-driven verification for improving compiler optimization. Um, I worked on this uh, paper with Bodhi Satava Chatterjee and Dr. Santosh Pandey. So traditional compiler analysis, like data dependence analysis and alias analysis are the backbone of numerous important compiler optimization techniques like loop vectorization, register allocation, and global value numbering. These analysis yield optimized, high quality optimized encode while keeping compilation time low. However, these compiler analysis are from imposition. As a result, they have to use conservative approximations to be safe. These imprecisions have happened due to the inability to check infeasible program paths, inability to symbolically propagate and value ex expressions. For example, if you know that A is greater than zero and you have A plus B as an index for, for an array, you can kind of great, uh, break some of the dependencies because of the A greater than zero. But currently, it's not, it's not, uh, that's not there in the, uh, the dependence analysis cases. Um, or inability to verify tactically unknown properties interprocedurally. All three of these hinders potential optimization opportunities that can lead to high, high quality encode. For example, if you look at this Lieberman method, right? They there's two variables, k1 and k2, which are used a lot within the loop, but they're initialized by external function calls. Now, this is one expectation of what is uh, for the boundary offset values. It could be some other function also. But what you notice here is that one particular dependency, they can have many, is k1, k2 is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to n. Now, the compiler had to assume all possible dependencies. However, if we could prove that k1 and k2 is greater than n, then we can break most of these dependencies and actually paralyze this code. And that could lead to faster execution time. But interprocedural whole program flow analysis is unable to prove that k1 and k1 k2 is greater than n. This is our first optimization constraint. In another case, for MCF, you have Two, uh, two variables are compositions, which point to the same locations. But LLVM considers them as these two as main aliases. In LLVM, when two pointers, if two pointers begin at the same location and point to the same overlapping area, then they're considered as must aliases. So in actuality, our compositions should be considered as must aliases. But because they aren't, there, there's adverse effects of, of global value numbering and register allocation because it cannot optimize this code better. So to, for us to fix these, to, to actually prove these optimization constraints, we need a demand-driven verification solution. Because if you try some other techniques like whole program into procedural analysis, there's exponential number of program paths which make the program slow, which make it unnecessary propagation and slow. And in addition, it's very edge-based. So if you have it, so you have to exhaustively uh, prove that this, uh, exhaustively prove this constraint at different parts of the program. And it's not supported by most production compilers. So let's try, how about whole program verification? Now verification has been uh, getting better, faster, and more modular just to do the numerous verification tool chains out there. So we could use something like counterexample prune, uh, counterexample uh, refinement to actually prune many of these paths. But the issue is that when you prove these properties, they might be unrelated to the optimizations. And it's kind of difficult to choose the starting point for these properties. So, so what, we, what we wanted to propose is this demand, what we actually think would be a better solution is a demand-driven verification. It not only proves only the properties related to optimization, it also has the ability to pick the properties that can break the most, the maximum number of constraints. And as you can see, the benefits of verification just in a demand-driven way, verification is being used in a lot of compiler literature. And one of those, one of those aspects is verified compiler optimization. The idea here is that it checks the legality of various compiler optimization 
meaning that it's focusing on the correctness of the generative code. If it follows the program uh, semantics, if, if something if something got wrong, there's also formally verified compiler. And the goal here is to avoid miscompilation and they use much more mathematical reasoning to make sure that, that happens. Or for, for example, they wanna make sure the correctness of the generated I code is correct. And if you're able to prove that it's correct. But what we're trying to show is that you can use verification for compiler optimizations directly. Basically, you can use some verifier tool in a demanding manner to boost compiler optimization. So basically, you would find a ball next to some analysis, formulate necessary invariants, and verify them in a demand-driven way. And to the best of our knowledge, this line of work has not been tackled previously. So now that we explain to you why a demand-driven solution works and why it's very useful for compiler optimization, let us uh, describe Vico, our, our our framework. So as we are uh, using this, as we are both tackling both the uh, dependence analysis and alias analysis, we have a two-pronged solution. So let's start with dependence analysis first. So for dependence analysis, we take a C++ code, and what we do is we do something called constraint analysis. We try to figure out the optimization constraints which hinder the dependence analysis to do better to do better optimizations. From these constraints, we make invariants and we use Smack to verify them. And once we get all these invariants, we put them back in the code and allow Pluto to actually parallelize the code based on these invariants. So this is the uh, procedure for how to take how to improve dependence analysis. Now, similarly, alias analysis this is, has a very similar uh, procedure. The only difference is we begin from the LVM IR, and then. What we do is we take we use LLVM to give us some may alias cases, and then what we, we make invariants of must alias and no alias, and let Smack verify them if they're true. And if they're true, we feed them back into LLVM and make them and add them to our own alias analysis pass and use that alias analysis pass to tell if it's an alias or not. So we can better optimize the code, leading to better register allocation and better uh, value numbering could lead to uh, better PRE deduction. Before we go, before we explain this procedure in more detail, let's, let's talk about a little bit about SMAC. SMAC is a verification, verification framework that uses LVM optimizations and converts the IR into Boogie IVL to prove properties of the code. So for example here, you get a C++ code. It converts into LVM IR. You make sure it's optimized a lot, and then you run SMAC to make this Boogie IVL. I, it's, it's called IVL because it's an intermediate verification language. And this language is created by Microsoft and they have verifiers which can take this language and prove properties. In our case, we use the curl verifier because it's very useful for loops. And basically what the curl verifier does is that it takes an abstract, it takes the uh, boogie IVL code, makes a program out of it, gives it to the Z3 and tries to find counter examples. And if it finds a true counter example, it means that for if you find the counter example, it's able to figure out that this assertion is true. And I'll explain this better in the next slide. So imagine if the source code, it becomes this LVM IR, it becomes this boogie IVL. The area, uh, area highlighted, uh, area shown in orange, is the assertion check. So it's basically a simple assert of x equal equal to m minus one. And in basic block seven, it does a compare of equal, and if it's true, it jumps to the return. But if it is false, it goes to a verifier assert zero, basically saying that assert is, that it, it is asserting that this is false, and it will basically give you an, an error. And so like in simple terms in, in Boogie IVL, you subtract a value, which becomes equal, and you go to that value based on some uh, branch, branch condition. So what, what's happening in the school is that the verifier has to prove that B, B, so the basic block four will now go to basic block six in this case. Because if it does, your assertion is false in some particular case. So they had to find a true counter example that will show that BB4 will now go to BB6 and make the assertion true. Now that we have explained how SMAC works, we can actually go to our Vico framework and explain you the step-by-step -step process we use to actually do this verification. 
So let's start with dependent analysis and more specifically, let's start with the dependence constraint analysis. So the first thing I should ever do is detect the constraint. So Pluto can actually uh, tell you the dependencies within loops. And so it can output to two, two uh, files and we use these uh, logs to actually detect, to get, detect the absolute and derived constraints. An absolute constraint is basically uh, uh, dependencies which did not use any um, use any of the loop parameters, while derive will have loop parameters. By using the loop bound, we can actually transform derived constraints into absolute constraints. And then at the very end, we can choose which constraints break the most dependencies and verify those ones first by just flipping the operator. So let's take this exam, take this first example, Lieberman 2D, which we showed in the beginning. Now, if you look at the constraints, there are 39 data dependencies and 30 optimized constraints, 24 derived, six absolute. Now, if you go, you can actually see one. So there's an example right here, minus J plus J prime minus K1 equals zero. Now it uses the J from the loop, so it's a derived constraint. While on the other hand, there's a K1 minus one variant equals zero. And it is an absolute one because you don't use any variable within the loop parameters. So after you get all of these um, derived ones, we can make them absolute by transforming them and you get more simpler, uh, simpler constraints, which we can actually make into invariants by flipping the operators. So like K, K2 and N, K2 and one, Once we have our uh, constraints, what we do is we try to embed them into the code and use Mac to verify them. So for example, what we did here is that basically we added a search statement at K2 is greater than N. And what happens typically is that you, once you include the, the SMAC library in the LVM IR, SMAC will extract this assert and make it into a SMAC assert. And basically it will run it with some particular unbound loop uh, Unroll, unrolling for a loop that you, that you define with a very high number and I found no errors. So we can, with a very high, uh, uh, with a very high justification say that K2 gain N is an invariant. So once we get our invariants, what we do is we embed it back into the code and, you, and we're using an if condition and use Pluto to optimize this code better. So for example, now you see here that you see the pragmas those are, the, those are used by Pluto to figure out which section of the code that to parallelize. But you also notice that we have the if K2 gain N. And what we get is this much more optimized code, which uses a lot of like uh, max sealed, flow D, min. It also has this pragma of OMP for parallelization, which is making it now a, a parallel code because we both have the dependency. So this is an example of the entire procedure we would do for dependency analysis for vector elevation and parallelization. Now, let's talk about alias, alias analysis. In this particular case, alias constraint analysis. So in our case, what our constraint is, is the main aliases. So through LLVM, you can, you can find all the main alias cases in, in, between two different pointers and we can output them. We try, to, we try to keep it in O0 so we can figure out what the, what the variables are directly. Um, we don't do all the main alias cases because we only want to uh, focus on the ones who are inside loop and the ones which affect inertia variables because we want to make sure that they get a register. And then what we do is to make an invariant construction, we take the main alias cases and try to show, make must aliases or no aliases cases and verify them. For example, this is a very much more simpler code. You have a pointer P, it could point to L or I or J or K, right? But you're not sure about that. So these are basically your constraints, right? Because it depends on the firm variable stem, which is defined by some other function. Now, which the invariants are basically either p points to i or p doesn't point to i, right? That's pretty much it. So we try these all different cases and see which ones are which ones are actually get verified. And just like dependency, you embed them in the code with asserts, and then we let Smack run them and prove that that they are that they are uh, correct. And so in the left case, you have a P, it's a must case, so P plus point to L, and you have a no-alias case on the right, P does not point to L. 
we typically do these asserts one by one because uh, the first false assert will stop will make Smack stop the uh, process. So we would first do most alias, see if it is true. If it is, we're done. We know the most alias. If it's not, then we do a no alias. And if that's not true also, then we just leave it as a main alias at the end. In this particular case, P just point to L, because if we use the, the get key function from before, we know that the get that that temple will always, always be greater than equal to 30. So now we have an invariant. Now we're gonna put it back in the code, basically. And then we create our own alias and as pass, which takes the information from the smack asserts and saves them in the map. And so if you ever so if you give us these two variables, we can tell you if it's a uh, must alias or no, no aliases. And if you give us some other variable, we, the cool thing about LVM is that we can chain other alias analysis and we can just pass information to do the other analysis and it can give you the output of if, it, if it's a must alias or may alias or no alias. So in this case, assert P points to L. So that means that P just shouldn't point to other pointers. Um, you get this LVM IR. Basically, like last time, a bunch of compares are not equals to, and a, and a verifier assert that's false. Um, basically, you have a bunch of percentage three not equal to percentage six. So you're saying that p is not equal to k, percentage three is not equal to five, p is not equal to j. And we see this in the map in our age analysis. And so, if you ever give us such a three percentage six, we'll immediately tell you that hey, these two are not aliases. Now, if you give us like percentage three and some other variable, maybe percentage twenty two we'll just chain you back to the, the LVM's own uh, analysis and let it work on the problem. So we now explain our entire framework. So let's now talk about the evaluation of how, how well we did. So let's talk about first dependence and vectorization and parallelization. We have improved the position of dependence analysis by 45% in real world cases. These are real world applications. We thought one of them was we will show you more. Best optimization in almost 75 loops. We've got an average speed of 14.7x on Apple M1 Pro, and we'll explain you why. We've got an average speed of 6.07x on Intel Xeon E5-2660. Of course, verification is fast, faster than how it was before, but it still takes some time on particular benchmarks. So there's a benchmark called Addy. Uh, some of the variables are more convoluted, so it takes a longer period of time to um, uh, get verified. For age analysis, um, we saw an average code size reduction by 1.621%, with up to 4.1% in renewable applications, average speed of 2.2%, and an average improvement in lowest throw instructions of 4.2, with up to 7.08 in real world applications. Of course, it took a little more than six hours to verify these 90 alias cases, which is not a lot more compared to the uh, dependency ones, because they were much more simpler, I would say. Um, uh, well, the dependency will have so many constraints and you could just keep on doing them back to back. So, so the benchmark we use for this is that for the uh, dependencies one, we use kernel program small bench micro benchmarks of loops from the Scandi book with inv invariant and implementation from this paper of Suji C. And we also did took some mathematical applications of polybench and that's how we generalize boundaries. For the back end compiler automation, like, you know, for, for uh, at least analysis, we took micro benchmarks, you, you, which, are, which, we, which we created, which would post main alias cases so we can pick them and see what happens. And then we took real world application from spec and core and ran our pass to see what happened also. So this is the kernel program, the small micro benchmarks from the candy book. And what you see is there's not a lot of blue lines. That's not because, that's because of, we have decreased dependency to zero in these cases. And actually, in 15 loop nets, you decrease it to zero. In other cases, you can see we have done a big jump. The middle the loop nets number 10, we went from 15 to 7. And that's, that's the small benchmark. That's one of the bigger benchmarks. So these are bigger benchmarks from Polybench. And you can see that without knowledge, this is like 214 dependencies. And if you, with knowledge of the invariance, we give it, becomes 118. Without knowledge, it's 106. With knowledge, 42. So we're seeing these big jumps in this uh, number, number of dependencies, not always, like you can see here, 14, 14, 20, 22, but definitely a better improvement. And you can see how the dependencies actually help you. Because if you look at this particular case right here, it was, sorry. We, now we can show you 
how these dopamines actually help you when you decrease them. Because you can see this particular case right here, you know, like you know, if you had no knowledge, it'd be a bunch of serial loops. Now with knowledge, you of course have some serial loops, but you also have some parallel loops with open pragmas, or you have some loose spitting to make it more better. Sometimes you have also vectorized loops. And all these combined improve the performance and lead to this big jump of uh, performance improvement. And not, not only on Intel Xeon chips, but also on Apple M1 Pros. And so you can see that here right now is that, you know, the best case is supposed to be FDTD 2D got a 40X improvement on Apple Pro. And Jacob 2D has got like a 25, I think, so improvement. Uh, but we should also notice that there's this one benchmark, C3D, which did not get a huge improvement. And the reason why is that, which it, it's the issue that by giving it invariance, it did a lot of loose splitting. So the, so the duration of the parallelism is so short that it's not beneficial to, to do all that loose splitting. And this is actually the case why a lot of our, our invariant knowledge benchmark, uh, invariant knowledge uh, uh, executables are better than the normal Pluto ones. It's because when we get an invariance, they don't split the loop so much. They keep it together and provide a, a larger vectorized code or a larger, larger uh, open MP pragma. Now for the backend results, you know, we, we found like 93, 93 constraints, um, a lot more in the real benchmarks because those are real main LS cases. Um, even though we got 93, only a few of them became must alias or no aliases. And even a few of them actually changed, uh, caused a change in the value numbering and actually led to PRA re re removal from redundancies. But what we sh can show you exactly is that, you know, performance improved by a max of 2.2%, um, an average of uh, around like 1%. And, but binary reduction actually decreased by maximum 4% on an average of 1.6. So overall, you know, we, there was not that big of an effect on the back end stuff, but overall, you can see that there's improvement that can happen. So in conclusion, Vico is a demand-driven verification framework for improving component optimization. It improves both dependency, dependence analysis and alias analysis. And to the best of our knowledge, this is the first paper that leveraged verification to enhance component optimizations. In terms of future work, we want to target other optimizations. And we want to talk about more complex areas. Right now, you know, we do some alias analysis uh, which we can pull out, but some some uh, uh, in, uh, alias analysis alias cases are much more complex. So we're trying to figure out how to use those. But at the same time, we want to improve LLVM and SMAC interactions. So we want to improve how to improve the verification in SMAC so it can become much more faster, and that can lead to fast time for this uh, faster times for verif verifying uh, these kind of properties in the future. Thank you.